Hello everyone. This is again Dr. Jay Mehta here. In this video, we are going to try and describe certain important aspects about management of IVF in patients having a very low AMH. So I'm going to try and discuss certain modern as well as novel protocols which we use as a part of treatment of patients with low AMH who are desirous of having a child with their own eggs. I have always given this example and I'll repeat it again. When somebody has a low AMH or diminished ovarian reserve or a poor ovarian reserve, that typically indicates that if we look at the petrol tank of a car, the petrol tank is at the E level or at the emergency level. Unfortunately, in a human being, the eggs cannot be refueled in. So that means the consultant has to play with the limited number of eggs that are available. So the obvious challenge and the obvious question is how do we maximize the output from that particular ovary so that we can make a good effort to give the couple a genetic child of their own. We've already discussed a protocol by the name dual stimulation, which is called as a duo stim protocol. Here, apart from the duo stim protocol, where we try to stimulate the lady in the follicular phase, that is in the first half of the cycle, as well as in the luteal phase, that is the second half of the cycle. And remember, we try to club together the eggs which we get so that we can form at least two healthy blastocyst embryos. That is our obvious target. Because if we form two healthy blastocyst embryos, then in these women, we can have an estimated success rate of approximately 15 to 20%. Now, apart from this, there are certain pre-treatment options which we also do in these patients. One, we want these limited number of eggs to grow simultaneously. That means we want all of them to be uniform. And one way, of achieving uniformity in these couples is by giving them something called as estradiol pretreatment. This estradiol pretreatment is typically given on day 21 of the previous cycle, and the lady continues estradiol valerate for seven days. And on the eighth day, irrespective of the menses, stimulation is begun. In certain other situations, which are used for poor responders. There is yet another novel therapy, which is GnRH antagonist pretreatment. So now normally this is an injection, which is an antagonist injection, which is typically used in assisted reproduction and IVF stimulation when the size of the follicle reaches approximately 30 to 14 millimeter. But here, in order to achieve uniformity of the stimulation, we may give an antagonist on the second day, third day and the fourth day of the treatment. Sometimes we can do a combination of estradiol valerate pretreatment with an antagonist pretreatment prior to actually starting the stimulation. So you must be wondering why are all these mix and match combinations being tried? All this is tried in order to maximize the number of oocytes or the number of eggs which we can collect from a single stimulation. Remember, we are playing with very fine margins and very limited numbers. So almost everything that is done has to hit accuracy. Are these protocols and are these treatments actually effective? Remember, by doing all these exercises, by doing all these therapies, we can increase the number of oocytes, especially the number of mature oocytes, which we can collect in a single stimulation cycle. One additional oocyte we get gives us the potential of forming one additional blastocyst embryo. And if we are able to form one additional blastocyst embryo in a particular stimulation, obviously we are enhancing the success rate of the patient by that slightly more. There are certain other therapies which we may include, which is the use of testosterone gels on the second day till the fifth day of the treatment initiation and use of growth hormone. Now, both these are used in extremely special circumstances when a patient is having low ovarian response or a diminished ovarian reserve. 
there are multitude of indications which are variable on a case to case basis and we will discuss them in our subsequent videos we also may try to use tablets of pyridostigmin in patients who are with diminished ovarian reserve in order to slightly enhance the quality of the oocytes which we obtain and cut down on the cost but practically apart from these four or five pre treatments which we mentioned the treatment for low ovarian reserve and low amh in a de novo cycle can be pretty challenging one must remember that for a lady who is with a low ovarian response or a poor ovarian reserve and having low amh the typical success rates using assisted reproduction are going to be in the range of approximately 20% there is nothing called as 70 80 90 100% success rates in these situations but women must be ready for it women must be ready for doing multiple ivf cycles in these situations so that they have a chance of having a genetic child with their own eggs it is also important to remember that in quite a lot of situations a combination therapy of all these treatments could be required which is then tailored on a case to case basis obviously as far as low amh is concerned there could be a lot of questions you can put them down in the comment box me or one of my colleagues will try and answer those questions as soon as we can thank you so much